Bisyata Deshmaya, we're going to learn Brochus Dafyud. We're going to start six lines from the bottom of Daftes Amud Base. Says the Gemara. And just at the end of the previous Shia, we learned that the start of a meal gets set. What's called starting a meal and the halachic ramification of that is that if you did it even after the time where you should have first davened mincha, nonetheless, ein mafsikin, you do not need to stop eating your meal. And we said that it's either netilas yudayim, or in places where they would tie their belts very tight, then just undoing their belts was called starting the meal, and im maschilin ein mafsikin. Omar Abaya, Hana chavirin bavloi, our friends from Bovel, and let's remember the Gemara said that in Bovel was the place where they were used to tying their belts very tight. Lamando Oma Tfilas Arvis Rushus, only according to the Mando Oma who holds that Davening Mayriv is a Rushus, it's not mandatory. Kivan de Shorole Hemainoi, Loi Matrichinole. If they have already opened their belts, at that point we do not bother them to have to reclose their belts and Daven Mayriv, and they can continue their Suda, they could continue their meal. That's what. Abaya said in the name of the friends from Bovel. Says the Gemara, Ulamanda Omar Choiva, and according to the Manda Omar who holds that Davening Mayriv is a Choiv, Matrachinon Le, we do bother him to close his belt again. Vatfilas Mincha, regarding Tfilas Mincha, Dilakule Alma Choivohi, everybody agrees it's a Choiv to Daven Mincha. And nonetheless, what none we learned in our mission at the beginning of this Omad, Im his Chilu Ein Mavsikin. Once they started the meal, which means opening the belt, as we saw, then Ein Matrichin, they do not need to close their belt again and Davan Mincha, they can continue their Suda. So, of course, even Mayriv, even according to the opinion who holds it's a Chayva, we would not bother him to close his belt. So, what did the Chaverim mean when they said that only according to the opinion that says that Mayriv is Rishos, they would not bother them to reclose their belts? Rav Hanina said explicitly that regarding Mincha, as soon as they opened up their belts, they, we would not bother them to have to close it again. So Gemara is going to give two answers. Hasam lo yishchicha shikros. Regarding Mincha, where it was not common for people to become intoxicated during the daytime meal, therefore, once they started their meal, we can assume that they'll finish their meal and they will catch the time of Mincha. Hocha, but regarding Mayriv, which is the evening meal, Shechicha Shechros, people would often become intoxicated, and then they could just fall asleep and miss davening Mayriv altogether. And that's why the Chaverim in Bovel said that regarding Mayriv, if you assume that Mayriv is Choiva, you have to close your belt again and daven. You're not allowed to start the meal until you've davened Mayriv, because you may become intoxicated and miss Mayriv altogether. But if you hold that Tfilas Arvis Rishos, then even for Mayriv, and even though there's a risk that he'll get intoxicated, the Chachomim did not require him to close his belt before eating and davening Mayriv. In Nami, a second explanation, says the Gemara, B'mincha kivan de kvir zimna mirtas v'leosi lemifsha. Since Mincha can only be davened in a relatively short amount of time, which is five and a half halachic hours, from half an hour after Chatzos until Tzais HaKechovim, so a person will be anxious and he'll make sure not to be negligent and he'll daven mincha. Arvis, however, regarding Mayriv, Kivan de Kulelailo's man Arvis, he's got the whole 12 hours of the night to daven Mayriv, he won't be anxious, he won't be worried, he won't be on his mind, and he may become negligent and get carried away with his meal and forget to daven Mayriv altogether. And therefore, regarding Mincha, they did not require him to close his belt again and daven before eating, but Mayriv, according to the opinion who holds that Tfilas Arvis Choiva, they insisted that he davens Mayriv before eating his meal. Continues the Gemara. Maski Flo Rav Sheishis. Rav Sheishis asked the following question, and there's a discussion. Did, is, is he asking his question on Rav Hanina, on the Summit base that said that the beginning of a meal is Mishayatir Chagura when he opens his belt? Or is it on Abaya, who is quoting the Chaverim, who speaks about opening the belt as being a starting point of a meal? 
And the Mepharshim say of Sheshes could not be asking on Abaya. He lived before Abaya. And others say that when the Gemara says at the beginning of the Tesamadvais, the, the beginning of the Sheh we had today, the Abaya, it's not Abaya, it's Ziri, and Rav Sheshes lived after Ziri, so he's asking on Ziri, which in our Gemara is Abaya. Either way, Rav Sheshes asked the following question. What's this whole discussion about opening a belt, not opening a belt? Is it such a tircha, such a bother to close your belt? Opening your belt, closing your belt, what's the big bother? Why is that the, the point at which we say he does or does not have to go and daven mincha or mayriv and, and he can't have his meal? Just close your belt and daven. Or daven without. The second question is, daven with your belt open. Why is, why is the belt become such an issue? Says the Gemara, Mishum Shenemar Hikoin Likras Elikecho Yisrael. There's a special halacha with Tfila that you have to prepare yourself when standing in front of Hashem in Tfila. And this preparation requires us to have a belt round our waists. <coughs> and this answers the second question why the Chachomim were not okay with somebody davening with their belt open. When Tosis brings that one also has to take care that there should not be a problem of liboy roya esa erva in the olden days where they would wear cloaks and they would not wear trousers like we wear or pants like we wear then if they would not have a belt there would be a problem with the heart seeing the private parts and one may not daven like that. Either way one has to take care that also there's no problem of liboy roya esa erva also there should be there's an added halacha of hikoin likras elikecho yisrael, which the Gemara brings, that one should daven being prepared and being girded, wearing a belt is something which is a preparation for davening with covered in front of Hashem. And this is the source that's brought in Shulchan Aruch and Erechaim Simon Tadik Aleph for those who wear a garital, for those who wear a belt when they daven, Shemin Esra, this is the source. Continues the Gemara. Rava bar Ravuna Romi Puzmuki. Umatsli. R- Rava, the son of Ravuna, he would put on a, an expensive pair of shoes and he would daven that way. Omar Hikoin Likras Elikecho Yisrael, that when you daven, you have to daven with respect, and one of the ways of respecting is not to daven barefoot. And others say that barefoot is less of an issue, and here he was putting on expensive shoes because of the covert of the tefillah. Rava Shodi Glimei. Rava would remove his expensive robe, upochar yode, and he would clasp his hands one in the other, umatsli, and that's how he would daven. Omar, he would say, ka'avda kamimori, I'm davening in front of Hashem like a servant is standing in front of his master, and therefore it has to be done without all this glamour. Omar Vashi, Ravashi says, Chazino lele of Kahana, I saw of Kahana. Ki ikat tsara ba'alma, when there was pain and anguish and stress in the world, Shodi glime, he would remove his robe, upochar yode, and clasp his hands, umatsli, and he would daven that way, Omar, and he would say, Ka'avda kamimori, like a servant in front of his master. Ki ikat shalma, but when there was peace in the world, lovish, he would be well dressed, umiskase, and he would cover himself and be cloaked with his robe, umatsli, and that's how he would daven. Omar, he said, You stand in front of Hashem, having been well prepared to stand in front of the King of all Kings. Continues the Gemara. Rava Chazyel Rav Amnuna, Rava saw Rav Hamnuna de Komarich Betzloise, who spent a long time davening. Omar, so Rava said, Manichin Chaya Oilom. Why is Rav Amnuna leaving Torah, which is Chaya Oilom, which is the which is the pursuit of the eternal world of Oilam Abba, Vaiskim Bchaye Shah, and he's he's pursuing just worldly matters. And Rashi says that the Tefillah is deals with Rafua is asking for health, for peace, for Shalom, for Mazainus, for Parnosa, for sustenance. These are things which are worldly. Why is he not? engaging in pursuit of the eternal world by learning Torah. You're right, there's a time to pursue eternal world, there's a time to learn Torah, but there's also a time to daven, and since there's a time to daven, I'm engaging in tefillah as long as it takes. Continues the Gemara. Rabbi Yirmiya have a Yosef Kamedu Rabbi Zeyra. Rabbi Yirmiya was sitting in front of Rabbi Zeyra, and they were learning Torah. 
Noga Litzluye. It became late and it was coming to the end of this man of Tfilah. The Haba Commissary of Revirmia. And Revirmia hurried in order to Davin. Korya Lerbzeir Rabzeir said on said about Rabirmia, Mesir Oznoi Mishmoya Toiro, Gam Tfilosoi Toiva. Somebody who turns his ear away from Taira, even if the reason he's stopping to learn is in order to go in Davan, it's a Toiva, then his Tfilis will not be received in Shemaim. Hashem does not want that. And there's a big question, what does it mean? We know that you have to Davan and you're allowed to learn, you, even if you wait till the last minute, but at the last minute you have to Davan. And Taisa says that there's two explanations for this, either that it was, he was considered like Rup Shimon Bar Yochai, which we're going to see on Daf Yud Aleph, Omad Aleph, that he did not have to stop to learn, or it's talking about where there was still enough time that he could have continued learning a few more minutes and only then gone to Davan. Continues the Gemara. Me'e Mosai Haschol Din. What's considered the beginning of a Din, when we said in the Mishnah that one should not start a Din Torah, a court case, with the litigants, in Beisdin, because it can get drawn out, one should first daven mincha. But the Mishnah says, "Im ischilu ein mafsikin." If you started the din, then you do not need to stop. So the Gemara is asking, what's called starting the din? Rabbi Yirmiya of Rabbi Yoyna, Chad Omar Mishis Atfu Adayonim. One says it's from the time where the Dayonim, they cover themselves with their robes. Chad Omar Mishis Yiftachu Bale Dinim. From the time where the litigants start talking and, and saying their claims, their arguments. It was typical, and that's how it should be, that the Dayonim would cover themselves over with the robe in order to keep full focus and concentration on what's going on and not get sidetracked with anything else going on in the courtrooms, and that way they'll be able to give a psak din, a ruling which is completely truthful. So the question is. Why are the two of them arguing as to the beginning of the din? Are they arguing at all? Says the Gemara of Eloi Pligi. They're not really arguing. If they were already engaged in a previous din taira beforehand, and now it's come to Samuch Lemincha, what's called that the next din has started, it's when the litigants start saying their claims. It can't be when they cover, when they cloak themselves with their robes, because they've already done that from the previous din taira. But in a case where there was no previous Din Torah, and now they're sitting down for their first Din Torah in this session, then starting the Din Torah is marked by the fact that the Dayonim are covering their heads with their robes. Continues the Gemara. Rav Ami and Rav Asi have a Yosef of a Goros of Beina Amuda. Rav Ami and Rav Asi, who were known as the Dayonim of Eretz Yisrael, they were engaged in Torah learning between the pillars of the Beis HaMedrash or of the public place there. V'chol shaita v'shaita, every hour have a tofchia ibra dudasha, they would bang on the bolt of the door. V'omri and they would proclaim, i'ika d'isle dina, if there's anyone here who has an argument, a case with their friends, leil v'laisi should come up and come in, in order to have the din taira. R'v'chizda v'rabba baravuna, have a yasu b'dina kula yayma, they were engaged in dine taira the whole day. They felt bad, they felt weakened. And Rashi's got two explanations. Were they feeling bad because they hadn't had time to learn Torah all day? Or were they feeling weak because they had not had the chance to eat yet? Tonoluhu Ravchia Barav Midifti. Ravchia Barav from place of Difti, he commented to them as follows. It says that Moshe Rabbeinu, he was... He was serving, he was judging the people from the morning till the evening. Also, he asked, Could it possibly be that Moshe was judging the people all day long? When did he do his Torah learning? The Pasuk is teaching us that in truth Moshe was not judging them all day. And the few hours that he was judging them is considered as if he was judging a full day. Kol Dayan Shedon Din Emes Lamitai. Any Dayan is engaged in faithful and truthful judgment. 
afilu shoachas, even just a short amount of time. Male olav akasov, it's reckoned by the pasuk, by the Torah, ki ilu nasa shutaf lakadish baruchu, as if he's a partner with Hashem, the Maisa Bereshis, with the creation of the world. Ksiv hocha, it says regarding Moshe Rabbeinu that was judging the world, that was judging the people. Vayamoid Moshe al haom mina boiker ad haorev that he was judging the people from the morning until the evening. Uchsiv Hasom, and regarding creation of the world, it says, Vayhi Erev, Vayhi Voiker, Yom Echad. It was evening, it was morning, Yom Echad. Since both judging the people and creation of the world is categorized by Erev Voiker, morning till evening, evening till morning, so it's coming to teach us that the reward of somebody, of a Dayan, who is judging faithfully and truthfully, even just a short amount of time, is as if he's a partner in creation of the world. But in truth, a person, a Dayan, does not have to be engaged in, in, in being a judge all day. It's enough just a few hours of the day. And that's what the response was to Rav Chizda and Rabbi Bar Huna, who were engaged all day with judging the people. It was not necessary. They only have to judge a few hours a day. Continues the Gemara Admosa Yeshim Badin. Okay, so you've just told us that a Dayan does not have to be engaged in court cases all day. How long? Yes. Omar of Sheishes Adzman Suda. Until the time that Talmidei Chachomim, a Dayan is supposed to be a Talmud Chacham, until the time that a Talmud Chacham is typically supposed to eat his meal. Omar of Choma, Micro. Where do you see that the Dayanim should be those that are eating their meal when Talmidei Chachomim eat their meal? Tirsib, as it says in the Pasuk, Eloch Eretz, woe to you the land, Shemalkeich Noar, that the king acts like an adolescent, Vesoraich Baboike Yechelu, and the ministers they dine in the morning. Ashreich Eretz, happy are you, praised are you the land, Shemalkeich Ben Choyrim, that the king is a man of dignity, Vesoraich Baes Yechelu, and the ministers which is obviously referring, the kings and the ministers here are the Dayonim, the Talmidei Chachomim, Ba'is Yoichelu, they're eating in the proper time. Begvura v'loi b'ashasi, that they are engaged in strength, which is Torah, and not in drunkenness in, with drinking. Another Gemara is going to say, Begvura shel Torah v'loi b'ashasi ashel yayin, these kings, these rulers, these ministers, they are engaged in Gvura, in the strength, and strength is Torah, and not in Shsiyah of Yain drinking wine. And now we're going to see in the Braisa that what is the time that these Tamidi Chachomim, these kings, these ministers, when are they supposed to be, or when's the time that they are supposed to eat? Tonu Rabbonon, Shari Shaina Machol Ludim. The first hour of the day is the time where the tribe of cannibalists, that's when they used to eat. Shniyo Machol Listim. The second hour of the day is the time that thieves used to eat. Shlishis machol yoshim. The third hour of the day is the time that those that inherited wealth and they did not have to work in order to have money with which to buy food to eat, and therefore they would eat in the third hour. Revius machol poelim. The fourth hour is the meal of those who have labor. The laborers they're working, they have some money, they can buy food to eat. Chamishis machol kol adam. And the fifth hour is the, where all other people, that's when they typically eat. And the Gemara interrupts the Bryce in the middle. Aini, is this so? Vahomer of Papa, did your Papa not say, Revius Zman Suda Lechol Adam? You just said now that Chamishis is the Zman Suda Lechol Adam. Did we not learn, did your Papa not say that the fourth hour is when all people eat? So the Gemara says, Elo, you're right. The Bryce should read as follows. Revius Mechel Kol Adam. The fourth hour is when all people eat. Chamish is Michael Poelim, and the fifth hour is when the laborers eat. And then the Brysa continues, Shish is Michael Talmidei Chachomim. The sixth hour is the time that Talmidei Chachomim, that's when they eat. And there's a discussion in the Mepharshim, is this the beginning of the sixth hour or the end of the sixth hour? Either way, the Dayonim who are judging, they, they are supposed to be sitting in judgment until the sixth hour which is the time for Talmidei Chachomim to eat. Mikan ve'elach. If somebody eats after this time, kazayrik evan lechemes, it's like throwing a stone into a bag. If you have a bag that's got wine in it, and you want to fill up the, the bag with wine, then 
what you should do is you should pour more wine into the bag. But if you put a stone in the bag, the level of the wine will raise, but the, you haven't added any more wine in it. It's just, it just looks like there's more wine, but you haven't really filled it up with more wine. And eating, filling up one's stomach with food after this time, after the sixth hour, is not really helpful. And Rashi's got a discussion, is it harmful or is it just not helpful? Omar Abaya. Loi Omron, this is only true that eating after the sixth hour is kazerik evan lechemes elo deloi toim midi b'tzafra. It's only if you did not taste anything from the morning. Avol toim midi b'tzafra. But if you ate something for early on in the morning, less lan bo, then there's no issue with having your meal after the sixth hour. Continues the Gemara. Omar Rev Ada Barava. A person is allowed to daven in the bathhouse. And since he did not say which chamber in the bathhouse, we assume that it's all the chambers, anything called a bathhouse, you're allowed to daven there. And we're about to see that a bathhouse has three different chambers. There's the innermost chamber, where the people are, are everybody there is not dressed. You've got the middle chamber where people, some people are dressed and some are not dressed. And the outermost chamber, the outermost room, where everybody was already dressed, they would cover themselves up in the middle room, and then, in a covered state, they would go into the outer room and get dressed. So we're going to see now in the Gemara. Meisri, there's a b'risa, and this b'risa may be a, a challenge to what Rav Adabar Ava said. What does it say in the b'risa? Hanech nas lebeis ha-merechatz, if somebody goes into a bathhouse, in the outermost room where everybody there is covered, yes, Shom Mikra, one is allowed to say the Shema there, or Tfila, and one's allowed to Davin Shmanesra there. And it goes without saying that way one may greet one's friends there and say Shalom, which is one of Hashem's names. One may don't want Tfilin in the outermost chamber. And it goes without saying that if he was already wearing tefillin, when coming in, he does not have to remove his tefillin if he's only in this outer chamber. The middle chamber, where some people are dressed and some people are not. One is allowed to greet one's friend there using Sholem, which is one of Hashem's names. Ve'ain shom mikro tfila, but one should not say the Shema there, nor should one daven shmin esra there. Ve'ain choylet tfilin, if he was wearing his tfilin, he does not have to remove them. Ve'ain maniach lekatchila, but he should not put on his tfilin in this inner chamber, because there are people there that are standing undressed. Mokem shebine adam oimdim arumim, in the room, the innermost room, where everybody there is, is not dressed, one should not greet one's friend using Hashem's name. It goes without saying that one should not say the Shema there, nor Davan Shemin Esther there. If he was wearing his tefillin, he has to remove them. And it goes without saying that he's not allowed to put on his tefillin in that room. And this is a contradiction to what Rav Adiba Arava said, who said that one may daven in a Beis HaMerchatz, which would seem that in all the rooms of the bathhouse he's allowed to daven. Answers the Gemara, Kiko Omer Rav Adiba Arava. When did Rav Adiba Arava say that you can daven in the bathroom, in, in, in the bathhouse, B'merchatz she'ein by Odom? Talking about the bathhouse where there's nobody there. Asks the Gemara, V'ha'oma Rav Yaisi Bar Chanino, Merchatz she'omru, Afal pishein by Odom. All the halachas of the merchats of the bathhouse that we that we've learned is even if there's nobody undressed in the bathhouse. Beis Akisei she'amru and all the halachas that one discusses about the Beis Akisei where one relieves oneself. Afal pishein by tzoyah. Even if there's no excrement there, one is not all the, those same halachas apply. Even if it's clean, because just being in a place that's called a bathhouse or called a lavatory where one relieves oneself, is enough reason that one should not daven there. Elo ki ko'omer of Ada b'chaditi. Rabbi Ada Ba'ava was talking about where it was a new bathhouse, which had never been used as a bathhouse. It was just designated to be a bathhouse, and that's why he was allowed to daven there. V'ho mi boya boile ravina. Did Ravina not have a doubt? Did he not question his minoy lebeis akisei mau? If one designated a room to be a lavatory, 
what's the halacha? Does it have the halachas of a Beis HaKisei or not? Why did he not bring proof from Rabbi Adi Ba'ava that one is allowed to, one is allowed to um, daven there? In the same way as the bathhouse, Rabbi Adi Ba'ava allowed him to daven there. Yesh zimun or in zimun? Why did he ask the question whether designating a room to be a Beis HaKisei, whether the designation brings into effect all the halachas of the of the lavatory or not. And it was not resolved by Ravina what the halach is. Why did he not bring proof from Abad Ba'ava? That's how the Sfasemes explains this Gemara. Lav hu adin lemerchatz. Can we not take it for granted that in exactly the same way as there was a question on the lavatory whether designation is enough to affect the halachas, that it's the same with the bathroom? And if in the bathhouse, Rabbi Adi Ba'ava allowed them to daven, why should it not be taken for granted? The same would be in the lavatory. Says the Gemara Loi, no, it could be Dilma, perhaps, Shani Beis HaKisei Demois. It could be that in the bathhouse, if there's nobody there, one's allowed to daven there. But a lavatory, which is, which is much more repulsive than a bathhouse, there of Inna had a question whether it could be that it's worse than a bathhouse and designating a room for a lavatory already affects and puts all the halachas into place. And that was the question of, of Ravina, and it's a question that remained unresolved. Continues the Gemara. We saw on Ahmed Aleph in the Gemara that one is not allowed to greet one's friend and using Hashem's name, which is Sholim, in a bathhouse where there are people standing and who are inappropriately dressed. Says the Gemara, Ein Shom Sheilas Sholim, one's not allowed to greet one's friend in the bathhouse. This is proof to what was said in the name of Ula. It's prohibited, it's forbidden to greet one's friend with the term Sholim in the bathhouse. Mishom Shenemar, because when Gidoin was addressing Hashem, Gidoin said, Vayikro loy Hashem Sholim. That, Hashem, that Gidoin was referring to Hashem, so to speak, with a double name, Hashem Sholim. And since Sholim is Hashem's name, one's not allowed to say it in the bathhouse. Are you suggesting that the word Emuno, which is faithful or trust, referring to Hashem, one's not allowed to say that in the lavatory? Dirsiv, it says in the Pasuk, Hokel Hanemon, Hashem is the faithful one. And since it's Hashem is called the faithful one, one should not be able to say the word Emuna, referring to Hashem in the Beis HaKisei. V'chitei Mochanami, are you going to say that that's the truth? Yeah, and you know Chanami. V'omar Rav Bar Machasya, Omar of Choma Bar Guri Omar Rav, it was said in the name of Rav, Shari Lemei Mar Hemnes of Beis HaKisei. It's said in the name of Rav explicitly, one is allowed to say Emuna in the bathroom, in the Beis HaKisei. And why is that different to Sholim? Says the Gemara Hosom, Shem Gufei Loi Ikri. Hochi. Hashem is not called Nemon. He's not called Mehemnasa. The Metergminon Eleko Mehemna. When the, on the Targum of Hokela Nemon says it's Hashem who is faithful. Faithfulness is one of the attributes that Hashem reveals himself with, but it's not actually one of his names. Hocha, but in the case of Sholim, Shem Gufei Ikri Sholim, Hashem is actually called Sholim. Dirsiv, as it says, Vayikroloi Hashem Sholim. He was, he was calling Hashem and referring to Hashem by the name of Sholim. This is discussed at length in the Mepharashim, but we've explained the Gemara in its simple pshat. Continues the Gemara. Another alocha in the name of Rav. If somebody gives a gift to his friend, he has to inform him. As it says in the Pasuk, And we saw in the Brisa, Tanya Namihachi. What does it mean when Hashem told Moshe, tell Klal Yisrael that Klal Yisrael should know Lodas ki ani Hashem mekadishchem, I am Hashem who is sanctifying them? Omalei Hakadosh Baruch Hu LaMoshe, Hashem said to Moshe as follows: Matono toivo yeshli bebeis gnozai. I've got a very good gift in my treasure house. The Shabbos Shemo. This gift is called Shabbos. 
ואני מבקש לתנו לישראל, and I want to give it to כלל ישראל, לאיך ואידיום, go and inform them that I'm giving them this gift. And Rashi says there's two reasons that one should inform somebody when giving them a gift. Number one, that if you just give somebody a gift, they might be embarrassed to take it. But when you speak to them about it first, it becomes easier for them to receive it. And the second thing Rashi says is because if they don't know that you've given it to them, then it will not increase the bond between the giver and the getter. And a matona, giving a gift, is always there in order to increase the love between the one that gave it and the one that received it. And this love will only be... In effect, if, if the person who's received knows about it. Mikan Omer Reb Shimon ben Gamliel. From here, Reb Shimon ben Gamliel deduced that Hanoisin pas letinoik. If you give some bread to a child, not your own child, somebody else's child, Tzorich loidia leimoy. You have to inform his mother. My ovitle. How can you inform the mother? What can you do to the child to make sure that the mother will be informed that you fed him? Omer Abaya, Shoif le mishcha. Abaya says you should rub some oil, umoli le kuchla, and apply some face paint onto, in between the eyes on the face of this child. And then the, the child will go home. His mother will say, what happened? Where have you got this oil on your face? He'll say, Mr. So-and-so or Mrs. So-and-so did that to me, and he or her also gave me to eat. And that way the mother will know that you fed her child. Va'idna dechayish l'kshofim mai Today, that we're, people are concerned about sorcery and you can't really apply uh, paints and things to, to children's faces. What should you do? Omer of Papa, of Papa says, Whatever you gave him to eat, you should rub some of that onto his face or, or s- spray some crumbs on his hair or whatever it will be. Make sure there's some leftovers on the child. The mother will ask the child what's going on what have you been eating? He'll say that he, somebody fed him. Asks the Gemara, Aini, is it true that you're not allowed to give somebody a gift without informing him? It was said explicitly by Rav Choma that if you give somebody a gift, a gift you do not need to inform him. Where, where do we know this from? Shenema, it says in the Pasuk, that Moshe did not know that his skin of his face had become radiant, consequent to having spoken to Hashem. So we see that Hashem gave him that gift of radiance and did not tell Moshe about it. So you see from here that one does not have to inform somebody when giving them a gift. Says the Gemara Loi Kashi, it's not a contradiction. Something that's going to become revealed anyway, you do not need to inform the person that received it. And since Moshe Rabbeinu would clearly become informed at some point that his face was radiant, therefore Hashem did not have to tell him. But when it comes to giving the child some food, where if you do not inform the mother, the mother will not know, then you have to inform the mother. Ask the Gemara of Hoshabbos David Ligluye. With regarding Shabbos, it's also something that's going to become revealed and clear because Hashem was going to tell them clearly at Har Sinai, you have to keep Shabbos. So why did Moshe have to inform them about it first? Says the Gemara, Matan Schoro Loy Ovid Ligluye. It's true that on Sinai Hashem was going to command us with the mitzvah of Shabbos, but Hashem was not going to explicitly tell us about the reward of Shabbos. So Hashem was telling Moshe Abenu, go to Go to Klal Yisrael and tell Klal Yisrael about the tremendous reward of Shabbos that they're going to get. Continues the Gemara. Rav Chizda have a nokit biyode tarti matanto de tura. We know, we learned in Masechah's brachas, Rav Chizda was a kohen. And even though he lived in Chutz Laaretz, at that particular time, the concept of matnois kuhuna still applied in Chutz Laaretz. It's a long discussion in the Mepharashim, but it's clear that the Gemara is talking about that Rav Chizda had matnois kuhuna. Now, one of the matnois kuhuna is that when a person shechts an animal, he has to give the zroya, which is the right foreleg, the lochayayim, the jaw, and the keva, which is part of the inside of the animal, you have to give it to the kohen. Once the Kohen has it, he's allowed to give it to anybody, even to Yisrael, is allowed to eat it. So if Chizda was holding in his hand two of these matonis, the Torah of an ox that had been given to him, and they were obviously valuable, 
Omar and Rav Chizda said as follows, Call man de Osi, anyone who comes. The Omar li shmaita chadata mishmaita rav, and tells me something in the name of my Rebbe Rav that I did not yet know. Yohivnu leini alei, I'm going to give him these matonis. Omar li rav bar marchasya. Rav bar marchasya told Rav Chizda, Hochi Omar Rav, I'll tell you something in the name of Rav. Maybe you haven't heard it yet. Hanoisin matonu lechaveiru, if you give a gift to your friend, Tzorich lo you have to inform him, as we just saw in the Gemara. Shenemar, as it says in the Pasuk, Rodas kenya Hashem mekadishchem. Hashem told Moshe, inform Klal Yisrael about the schar of Shabbos, so when I give it to them, they'll know that they have it. Yov and Yalei Rav Chizda gave to Rav Bar Machasya these matonis. Omar, so Rav, Rav, Rav Bar Machasya said to Rav Chizda, Chavivin olecho shmaitid Rav kulehai, I'll, is everything in the name of Rav so dear to you that this is what you're happy to give in order to hear something new? Omale in. He said yes. Omale, so Rav Bar Machasya said to Rav Chizda, Hainud Omar Rav, Milsa, Hainud Omar Rav, this is what Rav says, Milosa, a, a garment, a robe made of fine wool, Al Bashaihu Yakira. It's very precious to those who are accustomed to wearing it. And you too, since you're accustomed to hearing things from the, in the name of your Rebbe Rav, therefore everything that's said in the name of Rav is very precious to you. Omar Lei, Rav Chizda responded, Omar Rav, Hochi, did Rav indeed say that? Basraisa adifoli mikamaisa. This second quote in the name of Rav is even more precious to me than the first one. Yehavan no kitna. Achrina, achriti. If I would have another one of these matnois kuna in my hand, Yehivnu lecha, I would have given you another one. And the reason this second quote was even more dear to him than the first one is because it was associated and related to Rav Chizda himself. The Rav Chizda, who was very dear to him, everything in the name of Rav. That's what Rav said that he's compared to a very a coat of fine wool that's very dear to somebody who's used to wearing it. Continues the Gemara. Omar Rav Bar Machasya, Omar Rav Choma Bar Guri, Omar Rav. Another quote in the name of Rav. Lo mal yeshane odom bnoi bein abonim. A person should not single out one son from between all the sons. She b'shvil mishkal shnei sloim melas. She nosan Yaakov le Yosef because of the fine wool to the weight of two sloim that Yaakov gave Yosef. He gave him the kesoines pasim. This caused the other brothers to become jealous, and then the whole story transpired until it turned out that Klan Yisrael, the Shvotim, went down to Mitzrayim. Yosef Meshabonov, Yaakov singled out Yosef and gave him the Ksenis Pasim and did not do so to all the other sons, to all the other brothers. Niskanu Boechov, his brothers were jealous of him. Vinizgal Gil Adovar, and the, the whole issue evolved. Vyorda Viseinu Mitzrayim, and our forefathers, the Shvotim, with Yaakov Avinu, went down to Mitzrayim. Continues the Gemara. V'omar Rav Bar Machas Yomar Chomer Bar Guria Omar Rav. Another quote in the name of Rav. Lo Oilom Yechazir Odom VeYeshev BeIru SheYishivosa Kroiva. A person should always search when he's looking for a place to live. He should live in a place that has been inhabited more recently. Shemitoych SheYishivosa Kroiva. Since the people started living in this place more recently, Avay Noisel Muotim. Less Averus have done in this place. And therefore, it will be more guaranteed that things should work out properly. Shenemar, as it says in the Pasuk, Where, when Loit was running away from Sodom, then they said to the Malachim, let's run to this place which is very close by and small. Asks the Gemara, my Kroiva, what does it mean that it's close and what does it mean that it's mitz or it's small? Ile mikrova. It could, does krova mean de mikrova, that it's close by, in distance? Vazuta and it's small, and therefore you don't need to worry that this place is going to get turned over together with the stone. Vokachozile. You can see that this is a, a place that's right nearby. You didn't have to tell this to the malachim. Elom mitoich shei or what the Pasuk means to say is that since Kroiva doesn't mean it's close by, it means that it's recently just been inhabited. And and therefore the Averis done in it are smaller. Not that it's a small place, but the amount of Averis are less. Therefore, that's the place to run to.
Omar Bi'ovin, Micro, where do you see in the Pasuk that this place that Lot and his two daughters ran away to was inhabited more recently than Stoim? Tersiv, it says in the Pasuk, Imolto no Shomo. You should escape no, please, to that place. What's the word no telling us? Says the Gemara, no, the numerical value of no is begematria nun v'chad. It's 51 hava v'shel zdoim, but, and the, the town of zdoim, the city of zdoim, nun the base. We know, and Rashi explains how we know this, that zdoim was first built after the Doira Floga and was destroyed 52 years later. So at that point, Sodom was had been inhabited for 52 years. V'shalvasa chavav, and the amount of years that Sodom had peace of those 52 years was only 26 years. Dechsev, as it says in the Pasuk, Shteim esrei shono ovdu es kedor lo imer. That was 12 years where there was arguing and fighting. And then there was another 13 years where there was a rebellion, also no peace there. And there was another war. So and until the 14th year, that means 12 years which they served Kedor Lo'imer, another 13 years of the rebellion and the 14th year, altogether that's 26 years. And the remaining 26 years is when Sodom had peace. So you see from there that Sodom was inhabited 52 years. But this place where Lot ran to was Imolton No, had only been inhabited 51 years, and therefore less Averus had been done there, and therefore it was a good place to run to. And the Mirat Hashem in the next year will continue from here. <laughs>